know I don't need to let you down I see you don't know what you're doing I wonder why you come around When you see this storm is brewing Was it a lover, or was it a dream? Or was it something more than what it seemed? Good morning, YouTubers. This morning we we just parked up in a in a layby um, down here in West Sussex. It's the first day we've had as of recent weeks, really, where the sun is out, the sky is blue. I mean, there's plenty of cloud, but the sky is blue and it isn't raining. Now, as you could probably see from the footage earlier, that some of these roads are extremely flooded today. So a lot of people have turned around, I think, and gave up. I was behind about 12 or so cars that were trying to do three point turns to avoid the flooded section. But I mean, I know what my uh, van is capable of and what it's not capable of and what its wading depths are. So uh, I kind of had, had this whole section in relative peace and quiet for quite a bit of time, but obviously a few more people have managed to get through and, uh, and now it's become a, a busy section. Anyway, point of the conversation was, is that I've had quite a few people ask me questions over the last year, really of things like I, I own a lot of camo, does it really make a difference? Uh, when I've sat in the hide, uh, knowing that my patients isn't great um, people have said are there other things that you think you might have been able to uh, to do to to have made it easier and a greater chance of catching wildlife on that particular day so i thought i would just run through a few tips ideas that i wish i'd have known right from day one when i first started doing my photography so uh let's get snuggled in the van as the diesel heater's on and, uh, and go through a few things. Right, well I've had to leave the door open to try and get as much light in as I can. I'm not quite sure whether um, this is really making any difference but we'll stick it over there anyway you never know right so yeah a few things that I wish I'd have known when I first started with my wildlife photography the thing I forgot and kept forgetting on a regular basis for quite a while was to keep spare batteries and memory cards um, empty memory cards and fully charged batteries I kept forgetting to have those on my person and before I knew it, if I was going to sit down for a, a long amount of time to make sure that it's a fresh battery and a fresh card and the camera ready to rock and roll and also if you've got them to hand especially if you're lying down you've just got them next to you it doesn't disturb too much motion by quickly changing a, a battery now there's a lot of people that take tripods everywhere with them for photography and people that really don't want to take a tripod with them for wildlife photography because of the weight, the size, the bulk, etc. But and I think that comes down to what you're photographing. I mean, if you're just photographing um, birds that you want to be able to access the camera uh, quickly and you're not sitting waiting or you're not sitting in an evening or morning, like first thing in the morning to get those lovely lights, you don't really need a tripod, but I tend to carry mine pretty much 99 kind of percent of the time because it's the evenings and the mornings that I'm generally out first thing and last thing and I find that when the light is a bit lower and your ISO is cranked up somewhat to, to aid with getting more light into the uh, into the sensor that when it's on a tripod it means that you can have a slower shutter speed 
which will also aid in bringing more light into your sensor. So if you're hand holding and you're already you're moving around a bit, it's you've got to have that that shutter speed really fast to stop getting that blur. But when it's on a tripod, you're taking away one of those issues. So I found that especially if it's like deer that aren't really moving, that when you're hand holding, you still got to have the shutter speed relatively fast. But on a tripod where that's not moving and the deer really isn't moving, you can really slow down your shutter speed, not have to have your ISO so cranked up that it ends up grainy. And I found for me, not for everybody possibly, but for me, I found that I've ended up with more consistent in focus images than doing it handheld. Now people ask me what assessments do I use for my wildlife photography and and that really I think is an individual thing but I think if someone had have told me what I'm about to tell you it may have saved me a lot of a lot of months of faffing around and trying to, to figure it out. Now there's three main things, there's three main settings that you have for photography. And that's your shutter speed, your depth of field, your f-stop f number, and your ISO. Now trying to balance those three um, whilst trying to photograph wildlife can be quite fiddly at the best of times. Now what I have determined after seven years of taking photographs and concentrating more so in the last couple of years Shutter speed is going to be dictated to you for wildlife photography, uh, as it is for most photography, but more so for wildlife. So, uh, say for instance, I am photographing or I want to photograph blue tits in the trees. Because they jump around, I'm going to want at least a thousandth of a second. So that leaves my ISO and my f-stop. Now, my f-number, I rest to you the lower the number, the shallower the depth of field. So because I want to isolate the subject from the background, I ideally want, for my camera, it's f4. Some lenses are f2.8 and uh, f1, etc. But for my camera, uh, the lowest I can go down to is f4. So you take those two out of the equation, your f number and your shutter speed, that only leaves your ISO. Now I just have my ISO set to auto because if my ISO is really high and it gets a bit grainy, that's not the end of the world. You can clean up the grain. So at the three, it's the only one that you've got any forgiveness with. You can clear up a grainy shot. You can't go any higher with your F number because the higher you go with the number, the darker it gets. So you, but you can obviously edit it in Lightroom and, and bring back some of the darkness, but it's not as easy to clean up, in my opinion. And the last is the shutter speed. Well, you could slow your shutter speed down, but I guarantee you're going to end up with fuzzy, out of focus, um, blurred images that you cannot fix post-processing. So the easiest one to muck around with post-processing is the ISO. And as I said, because it's auto, there's a lot of circumstances. As long as you're, you know, if you're in good light, it'll have a really uh, low ISO, so you're going to get lots of light in, and it's the only one that will kind of self-modulate itself or self-regulate itself. So that in a nutshell, I think if I wish I'd have known from the start of it all that shutter speed and your F number are kind of predetermined to a certain degree, and any one that really fluctuates is your ISO, I think that would have saved me many months of jigging around with the camera settings trying to figure it out. Now the next thing I get questioned about is lighting. People ask me when's the best time of day to shoot wildlife and I think that depending on what you're out photographing and also what opportunities you have for photographing. I love them first morning lights. I find that it gives you that early morning glow or, or last thing at night and you get that evening glow. And I think another thing to think about is kind of also where you want your lighting. Obviously, when the sun's going down, the sun's coming up or even in the middle of the day when it's at its brightest, you can still try and put the lighting where you want whether you want the subject backlit, side lit, front lit, etc. Now, you can have a plan in mind of what you want, but you can't always guarantee where and from what direction you're going to see your wildlife. But 
you can often set yourself up in a position in a especially if you're in a hide and you you're hoping to see wildlife in a particular kind of field of view and if you know that the sun's going to come up on your left you can position yourself so if you do see any wildlife it's going to get some nice light nice side lighting and i've had a few experiences where i've been able to get up early uh, before sunrise and position myself in areas where really good lighting has made the difference between an okay image and what I think is a, a very nice image. So you can't always guarantee where subjects are coming from, but you can set yourself in a location that puts you in a position of where there is wildlife, it will be in the right place for the lighting that you're after. Now that leads me on to the next thing. If you can, set yourself downwind. You don't want to be upwind because your, your odour, your scent will waft across that whole area and it will be picked up by 99% of the wildlife. So often if I'm, if I'm heading into, a, into a, a, a wooded area, say, that I know um, there's a chance of seeing a particular wildlife, usually for me it's a deer, especially around this area, is that if I know the wind is coming from a particular direction, I will try and start the walk so the wind is in my face and it's blowing towards me, not behind me. It means that the wildlife won't smell me and to a certain degree, it'll help mask my sound because the wind obviously isn't gonna get, my noise is not gonna get carried to them with the wind, it's in the opposite direction. And that's something that I found has made a big difference when I've been out, when I, when I've gone out and I've remembered, oh, this would be a good idea, that's when I've seen most of the wildlife that I do get to see. So I think that's quite a key one that I wish I'd known from the start. Now staying still and having patience, that's been my Achilles heel. It's something I'm really not that good at. But again, I've, the one thing, or one of the things that I wish I'd have had drummed into me on a regular basis from day one is patience, patience, patience. Patience, 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 have patience. Stay still, have patience. But you think, ah, oh, I've had enough, give it 15 more minutes. And then hopefully at the end of that 15 minutes, because you've waited that extra 15 minutes, you'll think, oh, now I bet if I walk away, there's gonna be wildlife now. So you end up waiting an extra 15 minutes. And it's, it's a good habit to get into because those 15 minutes can turn into hours and it can yield some good results in catching wildlife that you get this beautiful image and you go home and you edit it and you think, crikey, I was going to go home an hour before that and I decided I'll stay 15 minutes and then, but I've already stayed 15 more minutes, I'll stay another 15 minutes and if I'd have gone home, I wouldn't have got that image and every time I'm photographing and I'm having to sit and wait and I'll wait a bit longer and I'll wait a bit longer, every time I get a good image, I make myself think well was I about to go home or have I got this image because I waited for that extra bit of time and usually it's because I've waited that extra bit of time so patience 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 and obviously try not to move move as little as possible so not moving and patience sounds like marriage and the last one that I get probably more questions on or more comments as well than anything is um, that I like to wear a lot of camouflage. Now I own a lot of green, obviously, kind of nature colours, and yes, I have a fair bit of kind of real tree printed camouflage. It's not so much about it being colourful; it's about um, it breaking the pattern up more than anything. Because obviously, you know, your white face, white digits, and the plain colour will silhouette you as a shape and obviously moving fingers stick out like a sore thumb. Well, if you're doing that, that is. So there's a picture here of, um, in color, and I'll show you the same picture in black and white, but you can still see that it's showing that you can easily see my outline. You know, I'm not, I'm not broken up in pattern. And then the same kind of image uh, in camouflage gear, where you can see I'm blending in um, more so because it's a broken up pattern, not so much 
the color, but in color you can obviously see I'm the same kind of color as the background. And even in black and white, which most animals see in, it's shades. So it's the breakup of pattern in the shades that you really see makes the big difference. So although I do like to make camouflage, also when it gets dirty, a bit muddy, you know, you wait till it dries, you brush it off, you don't really notice it as much, don't end up as being so stained. Um, not that I like to have dirty clothes and jackets, etc. but it is just another contributing factor. If you're gonna buy a jacket and it's for wildlife photography, might as well be camouflaged. I mean, there's a reason why all the armed forces around the world use camouflage. It works. Well, I hope you've enjoyed today's video. If you've got any questions, please, please leave them in the comments below and I will promise I will get back to every single comment that's left. If you've liked today's video or it's been of any help, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know if there's anything that you wish you'd have known from the start that maybe I don't know, that's helped you in your wildlife photography because I'd really like to know. It's always good learning something new. If you haven't subscribed and you'd like to, that would be great because that really helps the channel grow. So until next time, thanks for watching. Bye for now. Today I cars everywhere. Did you off?